<laughs> well, I don't know if this is actually going to have a second part. I don't know if this is going to be okay. Break it quick. Be quick. quick. Same question for, or for, uh, for Mr. Jock, but about Reboot. About Reboot, yes. Uh, so, what, what was it like being brought on? What were you told in the beginning? How was the audition process? What was oh, that? well, this is how it worked. I, uh, I went to read for, uh, for the part of, of Megabyte. And it was a toss-up between Tony J, who lived here in, La in Los Angeles, and myself. But they, I was also up for several other characters, uh, the, the big one being Slash, for Hack and Slash. And so I went in and, and did uh, Megabyte, and he just goes, My, what a delightful little sales sprite you are. So, come and tell us what you're doing. Hack, Slash, bring him to me. And that, that was okay, and they liked that, and they liked Tony J as well. And then uh, with, with Hack and Slash, they said, ah, make something up. And so um, with, with my signature these days, I can't remember all the dialogue, but it's just, he goes, push the button. I don't want to push the button. Every time I push the button, something bad happens. <laughs> Megabyte's going to kill us. <laughs> and then, oh, look, it's a little sprite. Be free, little one, be free. You know, all these things, and we just make this stuff up. And they said, excellent. Um, you're doing the show. So I ended up playing uh, Turbo and ha or Slash, Turbo, Slash, Cyrus, Al. What? <laughs> Al. Um, who else? There were so Air many. Huh? And ah, my digits. <laughs> Here, Megabyte, come and get us now. Yeah, he's always getting his digits hurt. And uh, that was uh, Doc Fingers. And that was very, very funny. So that's what happens. You, you go in an audition. There's, you know, a few hundred people go in. And then they narrow it down. And they narrow it down. And they narrow it down. The funniest thing, I got to tell you, and this is with Mainframe. I was always second choice. And I'll give you some examples. I was second choice for, I was second choice for uh, Optimus. But I ended up doing it. I was second choice for Femur in, um, in, in, you know this one, Shadow Raiders. And I was second choice for, uh, for Megabyte. And there was another character that I was second choice for. Uh, He-Man, Masters of the Universe, I was second choice. But it ended up being first choice for some unknown reason. But with, uh, with Femur from, from Shadow Raiders, this was the funniest. They had a guy come in and he... Uh, he read the character and he got cast. And I went, oh, well, that's a bummer, you know. But it, that's that happens, you know. You go and audition, you either get it or you don't. And uh, so I didn't think anything of it. Uh, uh, four weeks later, I get a call from the guys who run Mainframe, and this says, "Can you come into the office?" And I said, "Of course I can." So I I walked into the office and. Um, they had a, a thing called a maquillage, which is a, a clay sculpture of Femur, one of the characters sitting on the table. And the, uh, the, 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 the head guy from, from Mainframe at that time, Ian, he looked at me, Ian McPherson, he looked at me, and, or Ian Pearson, I mean, he looked at me and he says, give me a voice for that. And I said, what? He says, give us a voice for that. This is one of the characters. You remember that character that on, on Beast Wars? Give us a voice for that. And I said, okay. He says, here's some dialogue. And he said, hey, doll. What's going on? No, I'm just a businessman. And there was, you know, he's a big lizard, you know, a toady lizard. <laughs> and so I'm looking at him and I said, the reason I give him the voice is because he's a, like a toad, he's warty, he's, and he's slimy, and he's... He's hangs lawyer. out with his, and he's a lawyer. Yeah, that's right. And he hangs out with this gay guy named Femur. And uh, they don't have anything going on, but, but they, they just hang out. And it was a good contrast, again, with Scott McNeil. <laughs> <coughs> so I, I do a lot of stuff with Scott McNeil. So anyway, they said, they, they, he looked at me, and he looked at his two guys, and he goes, what would you think? He said, yeah, okay. All right, you're doing it. And so the next day, I went in and re-recorded all the shows that hadn't been recorded. And I, did, I think I did five, sh five shows. So I had to re-record all the five shows because the guy who they hired to play Femur 
it didn't work out. And that's happened, that's happened to me several times where you've, you've gone in and, uh, and uh, revoiced something else after three or four. The best one, the best one ever was I did the show called Sonic the Hedgehog. Do you remember Sonic the Hedgehog? Woo! Okay. Well, Phil Hayes, another voice actor and myself, played Scratch and Grounder. And Grounder, he had this one, well, I'm not stupid. I just lost my head for a moment. Oh, please, Dr. Robotnik, I know we can do this well. You just have to give us another chance, right? Well, before it was Abbott and Costello, and I played the Lou guy. I played, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Bud uh, Abbott. Huh? Bud Abbott. Bud Abbott, yeah. I was like, come on, Lou, we can do this. <laughs> and we had this thing where I played Scratch, and Phil played Grounder as, 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 as Lou Costello. And uh, we'd been recording for about six weeks, and Marsha Goodman, who was the, the uh, producer at that time for Mattel, came into, the, came into the studio one day and said, well, we don't like the voices. There's something wrong with them. And I said, what? We don't know. We just don't like them. Can you come up with something different? Of course. And brilliant, yes, this morning... And I said, sure, okay. If you don't come up something, you're fired. <laughs> and so, and I, those were her exactly. If you don't come up with something brilliant this morning, you're fired. And said, okay. So we're, Phil and I are sitting there going, well, what the hell are we going to do? Those are the voices we had planned. What's going to do? So we tried all these stuff up. No, no, no. And I said, I got an idea. I'll play grounder and you play scratch. And he goes, okay. So he did this big chicken. Baha! Hey, let's do this! That was Phil. I can't do it as well. <laughs> and I did. I did Grounder. It was just a stupid little voice like this. And, they, and then they, they came back and they said, yes, we like those. Okay, you're doing them. You're still hired. And I went, thank you. And then it became very memorable characters in Sonic the Hedgehog. But it's one of the things about being a voiceover performer. You have to be flexible. Sometimes you have to let go of old ideas and uh, be, be prepared or be ready to come up with something new and wonderful right away. And uh, it's like, you know, when you're facing execution, it concentrates the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that yet. No, well, that's it, but that's, that's what happens, and it happens all the time. And you, Gary, I've got some bad news. What? We have a bunch of people in line and only like 25 minutes left. Okay, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>